Hi guys, welcome to my channel. It's Tracy. Today's video we're going to be looking at some stuff from Sephora. Because of the upcoming VIB sale, it's a great little offer for something that you were going to buy anyway, but there are a lot of good sales going on now. You know what I mean? You guys ready? Let's get going. Okay. Okay, let's start with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Universe Palette. There's a darker version with the same name, just add the word unlock. I don't have it. When this palette first came out, I wasn't going to get it because I already have the Ambient Lighting Infinity Powder, the big square on the left. One big YouTuber said I think they had too much of this powder lying around. That's exactly how I feel. But I knew when I bought the palette, I knew it was in there, and I knew that I already have it, but I don't, whatever, you know. But I do like the rest of the palette, and those are original shades. And here's the box it comes in. I don't know, big YouTubers always show us the box it comes in. I don't know. And nice, heavy marble packaging. It feels like tin. Top right. Let's start with the bronzer. This is what I like most about this palette. It's the shade of this bronzer. It has a little bit of red rosiness to it. I know it doesn't look too rosy on its own, but when I swatch the blush beside it, it seems to bring out the rosiness. And here you can see a little kick up. I find the powders in this palette just a little bit drying, nothing terrible. The bronzer is on top, and if I put the pink blush beside it, you can see it brings out the rosiness. Here I'm going to be going into different lighting. I'm showing you so far these two shades have the least amount of glitter. And look, the other blush doesn't have a bunch of kick up like the first one, even if I do this all day. Just to let you see the pigmentation and the tone of the blush, it's a little bit plum, but not too much. I find this blush has the most of the pieces of glitter in it. Bottom right, the highlighter, it's the one on your right, closest to my hand. It's a nice soft champagne highlighter with just a little bit of rosiness to it. I love this palette, except for the big finishing powder on the left. I like how the other four shades go together so nicely, and it has a little bit of luminosity. It's not like crazy shimmery or anything, but there is a shine there. Like I don't think I would take this palette on a beach vacation, but I really do love it. Oh, maybe I should tell you, on the left, finishing powder, blush, blush, bronzer, highlighter. It's pretty. It's it's like hourglass always is pretty. There's one thing, you know what I find weird? If you look at the older, the unlocked palette, you see how the shades are in there just really nicely touching the sides. But with this newer Universe palette, you see how the shades are a little too small. They don't touch the side. That drives me nuts. But I really do love this palette. I think the shades are really pretty. But because this palette is a little bit shiny, I like to apply a good matte base before I start using it. For primer, I'm still hooked on the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. I find it so smoothing, and I love to use it with the Fenty Eavesdrop Blurring Skin Tint. I have loved this one since it came out. Usually, even if I love something, it ends up migrating to the back of the drawer as new releases come out. But this one, I've continued to just use all the time with the Shiseido HH polishing brush. And I know we're all different, but for me, these are the three things I have to wear if I'm going to wear shiny makeup because I don't want to add texture to my skin. Next is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. I hate to admit how much I love this cream bronzer and cream highlighter. I admit it with shame because it's so expensive but I love the way it looks on my fair skin. It's so natural, the way it sinks in. It's not even my first one. But with a Sephora VIP, it's still too expensive. But I love it. Next, I want to give a quick mention to some of the Hourglass face brushes because they're so good with Hourglass, but they're good with other makeup too. This little guy is the Hourglass Ambient Powder Brush, and I loved using it with the bigger pans like the Ambient Dim Light Palette. It's great for travel and so nice and fluffy when you just want to put a little bit of finishing powder. And then there's the Hourglass Veil Powder Brush. I've had it for years. I keep washing it and I use it all the time and it's still like brand new. Powder, blush, powder, bronzer, any powder that you want to apply softly and build up slowly. This is one of my favorite brushes. 
ever. And the third one, the last one, is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Brush. This one is not quite as soft and fluffy as the other two. It's more dense, it's more precise. See, it's the one on the right. I like using this one if I use a more pigmented blush and I want to get it on more precisely. And look, see, here's the other side. Not as fluffy. It's still fluffy. So this is the Veil Powder Brush, and this is the Ambient Lighting Edit Brush. I feel like I'm doing a puppet show. Hello, everybody. Next, these are brand new from Clinique. They're the Pearl Cheek Pop Pearl. They added the word pearl because these have a bit more shimmer than the original formula. These were made in Italy, and they're a really nice baked gelée formula. There are four new shades available on Sephora. This is Garnet. I didn't pick this one up. Next is Topaz. It's a little bit terracotta and I love it because it takes me to a whole new level of laziness. It's like you're putting bronzer blush and highlighter on at the same time. And even though they're calling these pearl, I don't find them that much more shiny than the original ones. The next one is Opal Pop. This one is very light. It's not very pigmented. It has a kind of a nude peachiness to it. It's very pretty but very subtle. If you like a no makeup makeup look and you're very fair, this is, it really is a very pretty shade though, but very subtle. And then we have Ruby Pop, another beautiful shade. It's a warm pink. This one's a little more pigmented. Uh, to tell you the truth, guys, I didn't buy them on Sephora. I bought them on the Clinique website because they were having a 30% off sale and free shipping. Hey, I gotta be honest. Starting from your left, Ruby Pop. Topaz Pop, and then Opal Pop. I really love these, you guys. Next, I want to talk about, from Living Proof, their full dry volumizing blast. I got my first one of these in BoxyCharm, and I thought it was a dry shampoo, and I was using it as a dry shampoo, and I was like, this is the best dry shampoo ever, because it really works, but it doesn't have a strong smell to it. It's not, like, thick, and it's just very light. It doesn't fill up the house with a smelly smog and everyone's yelling, hey, uh, how much dry shampoo are you going to use? Can you just wash your hair? Am I the only one? Does it happen to you guys that if you use a dry shampoo, about two hours later, your hair is more gross than it was before? It just doesn't work for me. And I can't take the smell. But this one doesn't have a smell. This is so good. Hey, I know I've talked about this before. I'm still hooked on it. All my other mascara and backups of those mascaras are just sitting there. This is the Hourglass Unlocked Instant Ex... Hourglass Unlocked Instant Ex... Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. Sheesh. This mascara lasts so well throughout the day. It doesn't flake. It looks amazing. And when it's time to take it off, it's a tubing mascara. You put a bit of warm water. You gently roll your lashes between your fingers and all the mascara comes off. It's the best. Next. Okay, this is going to be so random. If I was smart, I'd probably just get out my most recent eyeshadow palette that I purchased because that's what people want to see. New stuff. But I want to be true to the title of this video. You know? Remember already almost a year ago, Charlotte Tilbury put out three quads. Diva Lights, which I don't have. Eyes of a Star, which I do have and love. And Star Aura. Now on Sephora, there's no more of the Eyes of a Star. And on Charlotte Tilbury, there's no more Star Aura. So since Star Aura is available at Sephora, and this is a Sephora video, I'll talk about that one. But really, I think I love Eyes of a Star better. But they're all the same great quality. The point is, you just choose the shades you like. Star Aura is very beautiful, but it's very subtle. If you have to get up early and get to work and you have to put makeup on, you need something quick, easy, that doesn't irritate your eyes, you know, when you just woke up. These are all shimmer shades, but you can use them as though they're matte because they're so finely milled. And you look like you worked really hard when it just took two seconds, you don't have to prime, you don't get glitter fallout. They look so elegant and they last. I did a video on these. They're called Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter Luxury Eyeshadow Palettes. 
I could go on all day with this stuff, but I guess at some point I have to wrap it up. So let me know what you're hoping to get from the Sephora VIB sale. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please stay safe. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.